What's up, everybody? I'm Tahir Moore. I'm Patrick Cloud. And this is another episode of Damn Internet, You Scary. Hey, hey. Very special guest in the house, ladies and gentlemen. One of the funniest comedians to ever come out of Chicago, which is one of the best cities in the world for comedy. He uh, has lately increased his online presence with his uh, new series called The Thrifter, where he goes to all types of outlets and shoe stores of that sort, finding the coolest and most reasonable economic flyest shoe that you can find on the market. And then he just he just buys it. He, I don't I shudder to think what this closet looks like right now. He is um, a, a, literally a, a comedic giant. He can rumble with the best of them. And uh, he's here today for your viewing pleasure. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the show, Wildcat! Hey, 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 what it is. <laughs> What we're going to do, let's get it done. Huh? Yeah. I didn't want, well, I'd be wild if that was your voice. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, it, the is. Most yeah, it is. He yeah. talks like a, like a cartoon cat that hangs around like those mm -hmm. uh, the alley cats. that we like yeah. the cool cats in the back. Like, yeah. You do that on stage? Yeah, a little snaggle puss uh, <laughs> and cannabis. I didn't expect that at all. Because before we started rolling, it was cool as hell. He's like, yeah, man, I'm just coming from Lamert Park. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when you thrift, is it only shoes or everything? Uh, it's mainly shoes, but, you know, I, I do a little, you know, a few outfits and pants mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. stuff. Man, L.A. is so expensive. It is. So if you, can, you can find a good deal, man, that's what I'm all about. Hell know? yes. Yeah. I love a good thrift. I listen, I hit those goddamn um, the outlets up, but they, shit, the outlets started to have, like, regular shoe, I mean, the shoe store prices. Because mm. they, they, they started getting, like, the Jordans quicker and quicker. And like you weren't getting outlet prices now. Now you're getting like regular shoe prices. I was mm -hmm. like, this ain't what I signed up for at all. It's all about who you know. <laughs> what are the what are the rules in thrifting? Cause I don't think I'm good at it. Uh yeah. You you gotta depend on if you're going for shoes, you gotta build relationships with the, the employees, the managers. Mm -hmm. Cause like they go in the back for me. Like, I work. They like, hey, what's up? Welcome back. I'm like, is this Cheers? <laughs> is this, <laughs> Everybody <laughs> knows my name. Like, like, the outlets have become my favorite bar. So, yeah. Um, you definitely want to get there early. Um, you want to hit up all the spots. They got spots in Torrance. They got spots in. Oh, see, so you're doing that out here. Yeah, well, I thought you was going back to the crib and doing that. I do it everywhere. You know, right. we travel. So, yeah. you know, you ain't never heard of it. Mississippi might have a nice That's Nike true. outlet. And uh, I mean, you won't get called a nigga a couple times to oh, get what you want. But, well, I mean, you know, still it's still, still a nice. Well, well, you know, <laughs> heavy yeah, is, oh, heavy you know. is the head that wears the crown. <laughs> King nigga, your shoes. Yes. <laughs> do you take it straight to the dry cleaning when you when you buy it? Oh uh, yeah, you, you don't want to put those things on your body <laughs> yeah. right away, okay? Because they're definitely <laughs> donated and not sanitized. That's what I was thinking. Like if they all. had like bed bugs, or if the person who wore it before was an asshole. Like there's a yeah. lot of things well, that can. If you're not <laughs> willing to get over. bit, then yeah. you're not really about it. So, okay? <laughs> keep I'm... a little calamine lotion. <laughs> You know, aloe vera. I haven't seen no calamine know. lotion in so long. That's that's an old term right there. Oh, that yeah. calamine lotion came in that brown bottle and it was pink. Yeah, you used to put that on when you had poison ivy or uh, chicken pox or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I ain't seen that shit in years. Yeah, I've got a bottle passed down through the generation. <laughs> It used to be pink, <laughs> now it's a little brown. <laughs> you got a recent version yes. of it? Yes. The updated version? Yes. Are niggas still getting touched by poison ivy? That was huge back in the day. I, I don't feel mm. like nobody's, it's not really fucking with nobody no more. Mm. I don't know. I feel like people now are more cognizant, and because we have our phones with us, if something yeah. looks like, and I'm like poison ivy, I think you got a little white lead, we look it up immediately, like, yeah, let's stay away mm -hmm. from that shit. Mm, yeah. So unless you just like already in the thick of it or you're foraging for something, most times people will stop and look now, so... Yeah. How the fuck are you even around it? <laughs> camping. People still be going camping like real life camping. But where's poison ivy? Is it like more common than we think? <laughs> um, I don't know. Is it everywhere? Is it indigenous everywhere? It's more common on the East Coast than the West Coast. You get poison oak out here more than poison ivy. Hmm. Oh. Is poking poison oak on the trees? Um, a lot of it grows near trees. It's like a small shrub. Poison ivy is a vine mm. and it has three leaves. That's how you can tell it. 
Oh, Cam just be knowing shit, bro. Right. I didn't know none Cam, of that. Cam, we need to rent your services out. Like, hey, I'm going, I'm going camping this weekend. Is Cam available to go right. with us? <laughs> just as so like, like a AI, <laughs> like a, a Dick's sporting goods yeah. expert. You know, <laughs> like damn. <laughs> Ask Cam. We start your own site or something like that. Um, well, on the podcast, idea. man, we, we just be talking shit that we find on the internet, that we find mm-hmm. crazy, find interesting. Uh, but we definitely want to tell a little, the people a little bit about you for those that aren't already familiar with your genius. Been doing comedy for how long? Oh, uh, no, oh, let's try this. Rapid fire questions, you just, just shoot out the answers. Bang, bang. Okay, let's just for, start from the beginning. <laughs> Hometown. Chi-town. Windy Chicago. City. Illinois. Mm. Harvey, Illinois. Right outside of Chicago. Okay. Been doing comedy for how long? 23, 24 years. Woo! Kids? I have three that I know about <laughs> and are willing to feed. <laughs> Willing to feed is a big part of it. Hey, listen, I'm not responsible for that one. He's 22 now. There's nothing I can do about it. Um, Favorite city to do comedy in? Got to be Chicago. Got to be Chicago. Yeah. Would that be like your favorite tour date, too? Or would that just be like your favorite city? Favorite city to to do comedy is definitely Chicago. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, I love Nassau. Uh Uh-huh. You really? Know, yeah, Nassau is crazy. Uh, they love it. Mm-hmm. You know, they they come out of their huts. And it's where's just, Nassau? It's the Bahamas. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, this, mm. this guy. That's random. I, 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 I thought it was Nassau him. County. I thought it was like Florida too. I ain't, I ain't <laughs> just doing stand up in the Bahamas. <laughs> oh yeah, island oh, yeah. comedy. <laughs> now they do they do it like when I did uh, Aruba last year. Uh-huh. They do a lot of comedy in the Bahamas. They do it in Jamaica. It's just about getting on the right. Either the right tour or the right cruise or working with the right people because they, they fly people out all That's the time. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. They even have a comedy club out there. I can't think of the name. It's Joker's Wild or mm-hmm. something. They got one in Aruba too. That's all I saw it out there. No, we wasn't too far from where I was staying at. Mm-hmm. It's so goddamn warm in Aruba though. I was just like, I don't ever need to go there again, bro. Mm-hmm. Like that that natural climate is like eighty eight degrees. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I'm I'm good. I don't ever want to do this again. Right <laughs> it's, yeah. it's so close to the equator. It's just so warm. I don't ever want to do that again. I'm good. All right. Uh, favorite Chicago food? Hmm. I, I, when I go there, I have to get like Harold's chicken. Mm-hmm. It's just something about Everybody the vinegar this. and the mild sauce. Mm-hmm. That is, is just the chicken's marinated to perfection, you know, that the cooks don't really wash their hands. It's a little something. So you get a little bit of you that. You get a little bit grit. of something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You gotta risk, I hear you got to risk your life to get, the, to get it, though. No. It's Depends tale, on which one you go to. Tell the two cities. Where are you from? Here. Oh, how dare you. <laughs> <laughs> Got your ass there, nigga. <laughs> Hypocritical <laughs> man. I don't be, I don't be suggesting Master Burger in all the dangerous spots like, out here. Come on, man. <laughs> We're in LA. Have you, have you tried the the Harold's that's out here that at the mall? <laughs> it is comparably magnificent. Okay. Um, the one in Culver City is nice. The one uh, Hollywood is nice. I ain't been to that one. I've only been. There's to Harold's the one. out here. There's, There's one in the Culver two. City Mall. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like oh. right next to like the the volcano. And it's okay. It's it o- it's okay. Ex- to it, me, it is excellent. To me, it was okay. It was missing certain elements of it. It, it I don't know. It, it didn't taste as crispy as mm. the Chicago one to me. That Did one you is eat Chicago. It there or did you take it home? Not eat, I always eat my shit there. There you go. I ain't gotta right. eat my shit. I, I I'd say that anytime I'm eating a specific type of food, I want it that the temperature is set down to me. I don't want to yes. have to take it home and heat it up. I don't mm-hmm. want to eat it like almost warm. Now I want mm-hmm. my shit piping hot when yeah. they give it to me. But yeah. you from Chicago and you saying that the one out here is just as good? I would say that. Mm-hmm. I would say that it is good. Probably because most of the food out here sucks ass. <laughs> can we say ass on here? We can say uh, ass. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's not it, bad. It is, Fuck it. Why not? We can say that. It's, it's just, not I mean, that coming bad. from the Midwest, like, people really cook. I you know? just, I, well, Keenan had posted this, and I made a response video. He asked if L.A. was a food city. I said no. I said L.A. is a good host food city. Like, mm-hmm. L.A. is like, hey, we have many things for you to choose from. But mm-hmm. there aren't a lot of L.A. style and themed foods to choose from. Now, everybody's going to run and say 
tacos. L.A. got good Mexican food. Mexican well, California food. was Mexico. Exactly. Yeah. So what? Yeah. So you can't really claim something that was already here. I thought the question was, is the food good? The question is, is L.A. a food city? But Mexicans can cook their ass off. Well, you can't claim Mexicans, in my opinion, because this was already Mexico. California got awarded to the United States from the war between the United States and Mexico. They took this land. This was already supposed to be Mexican. So, of course, this Mexican food going to be good. Mm. This whole country was taken. Yeah. Why are we picking and choosing? Uh, nah, I'm not giving that to y'all, man. Nah. And, yeah. and San Diego and Sacramento arguably have better Mexican food than L.A. Especially oh. burritos when it comes to San Diego. San Diego got some fire ass. But Florida is fire mm. because Cubans... Go there, so if they can, if they could be a good food city, we could claim now. Nah, Mexico but Cubans didn't own that at first; they didn't own Florida. Mex California belonged to Mexico; it was their territory. Well, who St. Louis belonged to, huh? <laughs> so, who Chicago belonged to? It was named after the French. It was named after the French, <laughs> exactly. St. Louis, but but the, our, that style of food is an influence. Their style of food is an influence in St. Louis, the way Mexican food is influenced in we, California. We could yeah. still say that our food is good just because. I mean, yeah, we stole it, but I wasn't there. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm saying. There is no LA style food. Like St. Louis has St. Louis style pizza, uh -huh. St. Louis style desserts. We got uh -huh. uh, frozen custard. We have. Have tons of actually we got like three or four desserts we got the toasted ravioli we have um saint paul our chinese food is a saint louis style of food new orleans has new Google orleans style food mm -hmm. we got saint louis style barbecue kansas city yes. has kansas city style barbecue yeah texas has so much shit but la in my opinion mm -hmm. is not a food city no that's well, all I'm saying. Unless you like bird seed sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> what about Roscoe's, huh? Chicken and waffles? Uh, I don't, I'm just looking at what. Come on. Roscoe's chicken and waffles. Uh, French Philippe's? dip. Philippe's? That French dip is not an LA. Oh, he's <laughs> reaching. Philippe's. He's about to pull a muscle and he's reaching so hard. Just save me. <laughs> Come on, we got donuts. No. Chicago has Chicago style. Pizza, they have mm -hmm. Chicago style chicken, mm -hmm. they have Chicago style hot dogs. Yes. Um, Dodger Dog is on this list. We are <laughs> scrambling. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Dodger Dog. I will say, I've never had Pink St. Louis. I mean, uh, LA was the first place I had a Danger Dog. The hot dog, hot dog, hot dog, hot I never had that in St. Louis or anywhere else. So. Smoked mm. salmon pizza. Yeah, I guess you're all right. <laughs> Yeah. Smoked salmon pizza. All we really had was I've the tacos. I've never heard of that. I, 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 think, I think you're proving our point yeah. with your yeah. research. He said yeah. it. He I was hiding it. behind Mexican food my whole life. And once I poked tones of that, it's like. But I mean, it's crazy that it does not count Mexican food. That's all we got. Taco I know. trucks, burritos. I mean, the best tacos are those little taco stands. Oh, yeah. Well, there's like. Four immigrants and two propane tanks with mm -hmm. a makeshift grill. Mm -hmm. Fire. Like, it takes a lot of trust to buy food from somebody that doesn't have a sink. Yeah. That is true. Water. That's like, like the that's, downtown carts and stuff. Yeah, yeah but I'm still going to do it. Yeah. I'm seasoned I'm still with our do air. It. Yeah. So let me get two of those salmonella chicken tacos <laughs> and a damn, <laughs> E. coli asada burrito for the lady. <laughs> Huh? <laughs> what a lady? For e. Lady. coli asada is crazy. What about if you're vegetarian or, or vegan, you know? Mm -hmm. You got options out here. I, you, you do have tons of options. Yeah. But That's on, a, on a grand scale of food, it's like nobody's coming here for your goddamn acai bowls. All right, then mm -hmm. what is St. Louis and Chicago's, like, award-winning stuff? Obviously, y'all going to say Harold's and Chicago's deep dish. known for the deep dish pizza. We're known for the chicken. We're okay. known for bomb barbecue. Don't, Chicago's don't, don't barbecue. front on they the actually, barbecue. They actually do, but don't it's front. it's more known around there and in the city than anywhere else. Like you hear, you don't hear Chicago style ribs anywhere like you do St. Louis style ribs or Kansas City oh, style I've never ribs. Even heard of that. But Chicago does have a good barbecue scene. When we went there, Tony took us around. We got some good barbecue there. What is Chicago style barbecue? Is it rib? Is it rub or sauce? St. Louis is sauces, right? It's it's saucy. We do sauce. But Chicago has like turkey ribs. You dig? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, why people that don't really that's it why people is. ain't really fucking with that. That's it what is. you know. Oh. I mean, as someone who eats turkey bacon, now they got I a, would try it. They got a just turkey <laughs> out here gross. in Culver City. And they just got turkey? turkey ribs, they got turkey lasagna, they got turkey tips. 
it's it's excellent, man. You and really, it's good. She really open. And that's your out mind, here, sir. Huh? That's out here. Yeah. Like, he would try it. I wouldn't try that. Col- shit. Culver City. It's trust me. Hey, I hear you, and I trust you. It's, I trust you more than a lot of people, Cap. But I ain't gonna do it. Right. I like I like that pork, man. I let the pork on my fork. Hey, that turkey bacon shit. Anymore. That shit just don't be hitting the same. That shit. That's like that's like going raw with your chick. For ten years, and all of a sudden, now she wanna she wanna switch up and use condoms. Like, bitch, are you crazy? Yeah, yeah. I'm not finna. The turkey bacon is is it's not bad. It's protected breakfast. It is safe sex breakfast. It's a little I'm brittle, not but mm. it's good. It ain't got no flavor. You don't think so? Hell no. It's like diet bacon. <laughs> Mm. It's like bacon flavored gum. It's not. Mm. It's not. That it's like bad. bacon flavored gum, bro. That shit is disgusting. It just got, be that burnt. Shit, it be burnt because it flavor. don't change colors. Yeah, and it look like bologna, but it don't taste as good as bologna. These are all very exaggerated claims. Are they? <laughs> are, are they exaggerated? But I don't know. You had a couple of uh, recommendations of good places out here, and then y'all saying it's not a good food city. Well, the, the recommendations are not based here. Like, just turkey, is that's a Chicago thing. Ah. Harold's chicken, that's a Chicago thing. So, so y'all not saying there ain't good food out here. Y'all saying there ain't good original food out here. Yeah, it's 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 yeah. it's uh, a good it's whole good city. Food. It's he it's like it. um, what's the spot downtown right down by your career right there? Um, that lunch hall, the mess hall or whatever. Yeah, the um, Grand Central Market. Mm-hmm. That's what mm-hmm. L.A. is. It's mm-hmm. a great host. Look, we have many things. We have all of mm-hmm. these restaurants. That's but it's good. None, but it's none like. It's not like, hey, man, come to Chicago for this, this, and this. This mm-hmm. is Chicago style, this, this, and this. Y'all mm-hmm. like, y'all are the, you're the, you're the, the you're the, <laughs> the, the food section in the mall. But it's a really good we mall. food court? Yeah, but it's a really good mall. Yeah. It's like the food court of the Beverly Center. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a so bad you got, you got, like, you got, you got food from, it's hurtful. you got prices from different ranges. You know, you got, you got uh, in and out. But you also got a volcano. You also got a root Chris. Mm. It's everything in this food court, right? It's a lot of options. Yeah. But it's nothing specific to LA outside of In and Out. Like I would, Hey, yeah, you guys got In and Out? Damn. Yeah. <laughs> and and, and <laughs> In and Out and Roscoe have been losing steam by the year. Yeah. No one even th- talks about thing. Roscoe's anymore. In and Out and Roscoe's, they have a cult following though. Especially In and Out. I don't think In and Out's following will ever go away. For for you to sit in a line oh, that's right. wrapped around the building and now mm-hmm. in the street yes. and wait for some some mid burgers. Mm. What about that Randy's is, Donuts? Come on, nah, R- Randy's can't fuck with SK, Damn. and SK only got one location. It does not go by fast. It it has been it has been proven that it's faster to go inside than it is to wait in the line. In yeah, and it's, out. it's a lot in cheaper, oh. huh? It's a lot cheaper than what? Any other fast food joint in and out? What? Mm. Is it? You can get a cheeseburger for like four dollars at McDonald's. It's like eight. Damn. Mm. A triple cheeseburger at McDonald's right now is, is like three seventy nine, four seventy nine, and I feel some type of way about it. All right, but let, uh, let's talk about it. the hash brown now is three dollars at, 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 at McDonald's, and I just know I, I, I want to know what the fuck is going on. Okay, what, what is going on with a with a with a three dollar hash brown? Let's get that shit together. What about burgers? We got good burgers. Y'all don't. Y'all have like uh, y'all. The California style really burgers. Trying the hard yeah. at nothing. Sir. Yeah. Okay. Sushi. Give us that. We ride on the water. You have fresh sushi. You have fresh options with it. That'll be good. But that doesn't make it L A. because it's not an L A. style food. Nah. Yeah. Avocado toast. Well, again, even with the avocado, mm. like a lot of times you'll see like. Like even at uh what's the uh the one burger place? Uh they got like a Santa Cruz burger and it has like an avocado on it. Oh, um I've never had that. What is it called? They got one in North Hollywood, right by that CVS, right on Lakershim, right when the road does like fat, that crazy fucking burger? thing. Not fat burger. Not fat burger. Um also good. Habit. Uh, habit. 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 Habit's habit. fire. Yeah, they got like oh, a Santa okay. Monica burger or a Santa Cruz burger and it has the avocado, but it's not one specific <laughs> location. It switches to like all the beach towns when they add the avocado. But no one wants avocado on a burger. Yeah, I mean you'll try it every now and then, but you're not going there. Oh man, that avocado be hitting on that goddamn burger. I might be right about this because I keep seeing Cobb salad on these lists, and I'm like, who the fuck fuck comes to LA to get a Cobb salad? That's what what we're known for, Cobb salad. (laughs) Oh, catch a flight to get a Cobb salad from (laughs) Santa Monica. No, (laughs) no, man. Now, if you out here and you, I've heard you enough know, people say this. 
I've heard enough people say this to believe it. Well, here's the thing, guys. If we I can't hide w- behind Mexican, then... No, okay. we can't hide behind that. I also want to say, if you are going to any one of these cities that actually do have great food, St. Louis, Chicago, New Orleans, don't forget to take your Game Time app because Game Time is the number one app for finding all the live and amazing events in your area. They got last-minute tickets. They got flash deals. They got zone deals. Easy to find and buy tickets for every kind of event in your area. Buying tickets to an event that you're excited about going to, that you've been looking forward to going to, should not be an anxiousness field activity, all right? Or anxious field activity. It shouldn't be stressful. You should be excited still, even through this process of buying these uh, tickets for this event. But a lot of times, that's not the case. You're trying to hurry up and get it before they get sold out. You're hoping to get one area. Sometimes you buy stuff, you don't even know what it looks like in that area. And that's crazy. That is absolutely crazy. You're just looking at an image of a map on an icon, and you hope you're going to be in this area. Well, Game Time shows you that and more. They actually show you what the view is like from your seat. It, has, it uses augmented reality. You lift the phone up, and if you turn the phone this way, you can see what the view is like from here. Turn it here, you see what the view is like. No one else is doing it. Plus, they have real pricing. All right? The price that you get shown when you first click on the seat is the price that you're going to pay at checkout. There are no hidden fees. There are no surprise fees. You're not dealing with any of that. So I appreciate Game Time for keeping it all the way real with your bone. And with Zone Deals, you get to pick the section and the Game Time picks the seats for no uh, for extra big savings. So you're like, hey, I just want to be in this section. You let Game Time pick the seats and you ain't got to worry about nothing. You And you get savings from doing that. So the Game Time guarantee means that you always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, Game Time will offer you a credit of, um, will credit you 110% of the difference. No one else is doing that except for Game Time. They really out here killing it. So, download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code DIYS for $20 off your first purchase. Again, download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code DIYS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem. Uh, DI, redeem twenty dollars off your first purchase with the code DIYS. Uh, download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. A A A. That was well done, sir. There you go. Oh, yeah, you so go. What's your notes for? Uh, random jokes that I might want to throw in. Oh, in the podcast. I'm also taking notes of places to not go to <laughs> eat out. <here>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm heartbroken over this. <laughs> I grew up bragging and stuff. Yeah, we got tacos. Here's the thing, though. L.A. might not be a food city, but L.A. is unlike any other city that I've ever been to in my in my life. Yeah. Now, as a comic, I will say this, and I would love your opinion on this. L.A. is also not... It's not a... If you're here and you start your career here or you move here to, like, Flourish is going to be a little more difficult than it would be like in a Chicago or specifically a New York. Chicago, mm-hmm. you can get booked maybe two or three times in one night, but only on certain nights. New York, you can get up three to five times every night if you got that hustle about you. And you Damn. can actually make a living off of a comic doing club and bar spots because they pay the comics more. And you can get around a little easier because their transit system, their infrastructure is just way better. It is. Better than any other New city. York? Oh, yeah. Hands down. Hands down. The best yeah. infrastructure of mass public transportation in any major city in the United States. Hands down. L.A. should be way more advanced than what it is right now. Because yeah. of their subways? Because of the subway and the public transit system. Subway, mm-hmm. the buses. Anywhere you can't get on, uh, can't get to from the train is usually... A 10 to 15 minute walk, but if you have to catch the bus, the bus goes there. And if you have the last resort is the cab, but most people would just walk 10 yeah. to 15 minutes rather than catch a cab and save mm-hmm. the money. But yeah, their 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 structure is way better, infinitely better. Chicago has <clears throat> subways, right? Yeah, they do. Yeah, it's yeah, it's the, they call it the train. It's not really a subway. It's not underground. Nah, nah. it's above. No. Yeah. And Does it go? Is it as good as it gets you where you need to? If you had to. Only survive on the train. Could you do it? In the city of Chicago, yes. Mm -hmm. Suburbs, not so much. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's when it gets a little difficult when you get out in the suburbs, but it's still better. I've only been to Chicago once, and I'm a huge fan of drill rap. So that's all I, I just thought everywhere would you would get shot. (laughs) I I think that you're you're making some negative assumptions, (laughs) sir. You might want to actually go there. Well, when I did go, I I went once. Like going there via Instagram? No, I just went and I had a layover there. 
and my Uber driver told me, I was like, yeah, where's O Block? Are there certain spots oh. where you can get shot? And he was like, wow. it used to be like that, but now you can get shot everywhere. And I was yeah. like, oh, no. Cool. First of all, you said you went there. I'm thinking you actually planned a trip to nah, Chicago. Bro, yeah, you on a layover? It was a layover. That shit don't even count. I was man. there for like three hours. I went to a restaurant. I forget what it was. It was pretty good. They actually have one of the nicer um, uh, Soho houses in, oh, yes. in uh, Chicago. That mm-hmm. one is it's like Beautiful. four or five levels, but it also, like, when you first go get in, it's like a seating area over to your left. The the the, the front desk is right there. And there's like a bar area right here. It's got a little restaurant. Mm-hmm. You go up halfway up these stairs, and it's like a hidden fucking speakeasy. Yep. Like in the Soho house? Western doors and everything that fla- mm-hmm. flap open like that, but it's so small. It's just a little bit bigger than this room. Oh, damn. And the tables mm-hmm. are cluttered together, but it's it's super speakeasy feel. Like more than the shit that we go to out here. Like it feels like nobody's supposed to know we're here type mm-hmm. shit. And that's it's super in the dope. Soho house? Mm hmm. Damn. Yeah, they got a pool on the top floor, restaurant up there, and then it's like another little bar, lounge area on the floor right under that. But it's, it's nice. That one's real nice. And the one in Nashville. The one in Nashville is really dope as well. I've never mm. been to Nashville. Man, yeah. You're talking about comedy. Yes. Oh, those cities, specifically New York and Chicago, and a, a couple other spread throughout, those are great cities to build your set. Those are great cities to explore with your voice. Those are great cities to get amazing tag-ups. They're just great cities to grow as a comic. Mm-hmm. L.A. is a better showcase city. There are yeah. always going to be people in the crowd just randomly, and they ain't even necessarily looking for nobody. They just mm-hmm. there for the comedy show. But once you find out, goddamn me, Tashino Arnold, or goddamn me, Vivica A. Fox, somebody, it don't even matter who it is. Once you find out they're in the crowd, now you want to do your killer set, thinking yeah. that they're going to see this set, and they're going to want to find out my name, and this is going to be it. And it's like, no, nah, they just wanted to get out the house on a Tuesday. Yeah. But yeah. because of that fear and that, that that FOMO, like if I don't kill it this time, I ain't going to never get on, you don't work those jokes that you got on that piece of paper that you're supposed to be working. That's the whole reason you left the house at night, so you can work this new set out. But mm-hmm. because this person here, now you're, you're ready audible. to showcase again. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Um, L.A. is a weird place for comedy. <laughs> Um, because it's like everybody's, it's not, it's not real to me. This mm-hmm. place is still not real. Like when you, when you hit the road, when you're in the small towns, mm-hmm. you know, you go to the East Coast, mm-hmm. you go to Chicago, it's like, it's not that it's not real, it's just the, the crowd. It's like, it's, it's a weird place to do comedy. It's a weird place to work on your jokes. Mm-hmm. The open mics are weird. It's a room full of comics. Like, we have now open listen. mics in Chicago where it's like a crowd. They pull up to the open mics? Yeah, it's like regular people. Out well, here, it's, like it's a, all it's, comedians. The open mics there are, there are marketed as a show. Right, so uh, even though it's an right. open mic, it's still like come to the comedy show. <clears throat> we got some new comics every week. Right, you know what I'm saying. So if it's new comics every week, you know they they are working out shit. They they're newer comics, so mm-hmm. they don't have an amazing set, but they will be at the front of the show. So you get some more seasoned comics in the middle, and you get like you know the guests or the headliners toward the end. Mm-hmm. But you Is you a headliner and an open mic, you can absolutely because it's still yeah. a show. Yeah. Mm. And and people might that might be your anchor. That might be your draw. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like hosted by such and such, featuring this week or headlining this week this person, and everybody, everybody else is in the middle. But you can market that like a show because mm-hmm. there aren't a lot of outlets there. There might be one comedy club in another major city versus our eight. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You got flappers, you got the improv, you got the factory, the you got the store, mm-hmm. you got the comedy chateau, the you got ha ha, uh, you got the comedy and magic club. Mm-hmm. You used to have um, ice house. Used to, ice I house, mean, you got Pasadena. the ice house too. Yeah. You used to have the comedy union, and these mm-hmm. are the major clubs. We ain't even got to like the the the, the B level clubs. Right. You Where's know what Sunset Rooftop at? That's on. That's the right across. Right above. I mean, like, in terms of, uh, is that oh, a that, major would be, or... that would be like a venue. Okay. In my yeah, opinion, yeah. Yeah. that was that would be that would be B level like. Certain cities, like, when you go on the road, there are, like, major markets, and then there are, like, B-level markets that mm-hmm. you would go to. So, like, um, what would be a B-level market? Uh, what's what's the one in uh, Looney Bin? Is that B-level? Mm, no, I would say in between A and B. Okay. What about, uh, what's the other one? Is it Chuckles? 
Chuckles in Memphis. Chuckles in Memphis. In that area, that's A level. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. B would be what? Uh, in that area. Well, I was trying to think of a market that would be B in like that southern area. Because Alabama only has Stardome. Yeah, I think so. I think that the B level in a lot of places is is not official clubs. They're like restaurants mm-hmm. that they do things at. They have a they, live, you know, they, live area. They rent out a hotel banquet hall or something mm-hmm. and, and do that. But it's just, you know, I just wish that L.A. had more of a, a understanding of comedy. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of times you see somebody in the back, you see a comic doing good on stage, but it's like you're in the back like, that shit probably wouldn't work in Chicago. Yeah. Or St. Louis or New York. Wouldn't or would work? I don't think it would. And I think it's important to work on your set and cater it to wherever you're at. Not that you have to change up what you're doing, but mm-hmm. certain jokes aren't as relatable in other places, you know? Because yeah. it's too the, the premises are too local? Yeah. In too Chicago, we, we talk about, you know, certain gang violence that might not... Won't be translate. relatable yeah. out here, yeah. You out sure? here we talk about. The, well, you if yeah. you're smart, you can flip it. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. You, you'll you'll change the name of the gang yeah. to mm. to apply to it. Yeah. So, because you know that's funny, Cat Williams when he did his wild interview, he talked about his upbringing and how he had to spend a bunch of years in Miami, then you know Sacramento, then here and mm-hmm. here and here. So, are you guys suggesting that comics get their shit together in other cities and then come to L.A.? For a showcase as opposed to trying to figure it out in L.A.? I think that's a good way to do it. I mean, it definitely will save you some money unless you're coming from, like, New York, which you wouldn't typically do. You wouldn't, like, get your chops in L.A., leave in New York, unless somebody ran you out of that motherfucker. Mm-hmm. But uh, it would make more sense to get your chops in New York. You got way more opportunities. But, yeah, when you, you've you been doing it eight to nine years, or, you, or, you know, six to, six to eight years, you feel like, all right, now I'm ready for L.A. It's a good way to do it. Hmm. Come out here and showcase, and you can still like write. It's just it's not a lot of stages where you can work out material for a decent amount of time. Yeah. Back home, you get fifteen minutes to work out yeah. on stage. Uh, out here, you get eight. Right. Yep. You know what I mean? And you're gonna spend the first couple trying to win a crowd over if they don't know you. Because mm-hmm. if you didn't win them over, they don't want to hear the shit that you're working out. They yep. want to know that you're funny first. They know that you're funny first, then they'll give you a little leeway. Right. But you still better close, motherfucker, strong, because we could turn on you at any moment. Right. There's yep. no music. There's no background dancers. There's nobody to vouch for you other than the host. But still, fuck this nigga, because I only know him on a weekly basis too. <laughs> yeah. He ain't been in nothing I seen or I like. Fuck him. And then you have these host liners. <laughs> You know, that's Ooh, host, they, what's that? They host and headline, so they're doing 15, 20 minutes in between each comic, and now you have to follow the host. Yeah. So, it, it, uh, and, you know, a good host is gonna do a good job, but yeah. it's, it's that balance that I'll do a joke or two, and oh, then yeah, they're doing up. too much. Yeah. yeah, and before you know it, you're headlining. By the time you go up, the crowd's almost laughed out. Yeah. Not to say that you you know you're gonna automatically bomb, but the host shouldn't be doing more than five from. minutes in between, unless he needs to bring the crowd up. Like that. somebody sucked, somebody worked went before yeah. that 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 brought the crowd all the way down or something like that, and you got to bring it back up before. But if it's a good ass wave, I hate the host host ever like, oh man, I need to get on this wave before I bring the next no. person up. Let me get. A- Chris, bring that nigga on, bro. Let him let him uh-huh, eat. You had right. your time up top. Yep. And between every comic up until now, uh-huh. let this man enjoy that wave, bro. Yep. That's crazy. There's it a lot of like that. science to it. That's why it's so fascinating. There's like all the science behind all this shit. It's yeah. it's crazy. People think it's just telling jokes. That's just oh, man, art so form. much more than that. It's so much more. Mm-hmm. Timing is everything, man. It's like sports. You know, you don't think they really just showed up and started shooting the damn ball. Right. <laughs> They've been practicing all week. The mm-hmm. fundamentals, baby. Yes, it's the sir. fundamentals. Yeah. But it, I mean, it, it's it's dope. It's it's fun. I I just started um, DJing and nice. I already had a respect for DJs. Like tremendous respect for them. Like just knowing their audience. Being able to uh, adjust on the drop of a dime, uh-huh. you know, already having a set worked out in your head and somebody asks you for a song, you got to interrupt your set or at some point plug that in and it's still like, okay, I want to finish on this song. I know this is going to get them this high. This is going to take it to uh-huh. the next level. Like, I had tremendous respect, but like now learning the science behind it and the math behind it, I didn't think I was going to be doing the math with this shit. Yeah. Uh, and the guy that's teaching me, I'm, I'm doing it on my on, on, on a laptop. But he's making me do everything with either 
the laptop closed almost down or basically just my head down. He's making me like hear it so I can't match the pitch and the BPMs up. Mm -hmm. He's like, no, just do it by ear. Damn. He's like, because if your, your computer ever goes down yep. or you go somewhere where they don't have a plug in, you're going to have to still DJ. Mm -hmm. So yeah. he's like, learn this way so you'll always have this in your toolbox and you, hopefully you'll never have to use it, but you'll always know how to do it. So Just matching yeah. up BPM by ear? Yes. That's crazy. Yeah, because like, with the CDJs, you can like <clears throat> match it up, slow it down a little bit. with the, You can slow it all the way down or speed it up with this toggle, but you can also like hit the CDJ like on the side and spin it backwards to like slow it down, but it mm -hmm. only stays that way for a little bit and it'll go back to its thing. Unless you adjust it on the actual That's a good technique. Them pioneers be doing so much for you that it's good to learn. Yeah. Just in case that don't you don't have that. Yeah, yeah. So I'm 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 loving it, but it's just like, man, dude, I had no idea all of this was in it. And it's in, it's a little intimidating because like I love music yeah. so much. Yeah. I don't want to be bad at the shit. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. And it'd be like, ah. So I took a long time to really even get to this point. Cause my man's been like, he's been on me, him and artist or DJ Clean and artistic have been on me. Like, yo, when you gonna start? And I was like, ah, I'll let you know the week. I'll let you know the week. Because right, right. I've been terrified to start. Mm -hmm. Terrified to start this yeah, shit, bro. Man. Yeah, yes. there's a lot of similar things with that. Like, DJs will follow somebody who the crowd hated, mm -hmm. and they have to bring it back up, change the set. Yep. All, like, you know, I, have different sets for different venues. I didn't know how remarkable... Dion Cole was as a DJ. Wow. Yeah. What? He DJs He's, at the dime sometimes? Yeah. Damn. It then was, he does it disco. was ridiculous. Mm -hmm. It was ridiculous. The songs, he's taking church songs and mixing it with house music and it was man, I was just sitting That's there impressive. and all like that, like, you know, because a lot of people just trying mm -hmm. shit. Mm -hmm. He really got down. He's man. good at a lot he, of things. He got down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he started during the pandemic and yeah, he, he his, his setup is insane. The one he mixes with at his house, mm -hmm. it's insane. It's a it's a dope ass setup. But um, I, I I wanted to come that night. I should have came because I heard everybody pulled up. But yeah, I was just I was tired. Bro. Dave Chappelle, D Nice, Rail was there too, wasn't he? Uh, no, nah, I'm not. He wasn't there. He was on that night. This dude named uh, Wildcat mm. came through. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was dope. It was, it was dope. like that last I'm night. Last night that. we were at the the Comedy Chateau. And, uh, Rail was there. Ron mm -hmm. G. Earthquake. It was Earthquake show. Mm -hmm. uh, G. Thang got Royale down. Watkins. Yeah, yeah. Royale was there, and then Dave came toward the end, and I was like, all right, I gotta go. Yeah, I know you what, left when Dave came. Absolutely. Why? Because it's I don't have another hour and a half, two hours. Oh, he'd be going was, for a minute. What? <laughs> yeah. Yes, he, he will. Uh, I can listen to him it's, literally it's, all day. But to still have that type of love for comedy, because mm -hmm. he doesn't have anything to prove, mm -hmm. and you can tell it's more therapeutic. You can yeah. tell he's really venting. It ain't like a straight "Hey, hey, everybody" type yeah. set. It's really how do I feel? What's on my mind? And I've I've seen him, like two, three, like two times this week. He was at the Improv on Monday. On Monday, they got out at two a.m. Yeah, and he they talked. It was like it wasn't even real comedy. Like they were just talking. It was D. Ray, Dion Cole, and Dave, and Dave all on on, on the same on the stage, and they were talking about the Cat Williams thing and just kind of talking. So it was like a, a comedic. Class that I was in yeah. that turned a little master class started feeling talk. like detention a little bit. <laughs> I think I was in there for a while. We didn't leave at least two things. It was still yeah, because twins like, he packed up. And twins yeah. was the twins the DJ. He was like, I mean, I packed up. I was ready yeah. to go. Yeah. That's crazy. Mm. That's you just gotta like hope for that because I feel like I've been to the store a couple times when him or Kevin Hart or somebody will pop in, mm. and that's that seems like it's way like more common in. Comedy, mm -hmm. but you ain't gonna go to a random hip hop night and have Wu Tang pop in. <laughs> nah. But I mean, people do pop up yeah. at, at the shows. I remember when um, uh, who who was there? I think I went to a game at the Noble game concert at the Noble, and he had a special guest just popped up. And then when I went to go see Freddie Gibbs a couple years ago, he had a special guest popping. I was like, oh shit, I, I wouldn't even expect this person. But it's always dope when you do see it, though. I, I feel like we see it as in music, just not, I don't know. I don't know. The couple concerts I've been to recently, people have popped up, but I don't know if it was planned or not. That's nah. the only thing. So I know Dave I was like, I think he gave, he gave the heads up that he was coming because I forgot who was on stage. I think it might have, it was either G's thing or Ron G. They was like, yeah, Dave's on his way. He almost here. I heard people mur murmuring about it, mm -hmm. and then he just popped up. That's tight. Yeah, I love that, man. You know, And when he's up there, it's really like a comedic class to where mm -hmm. just the timing. 
you know, you might catch a little secondhand nicotine smoke. <laughs> I love the way he just comes in and Snoop Dogs with the cigarette. Like, he's a, he's Snoop with cigarettes he's the way Snoop, Snoop is with weed. The is, are man. venues ever like, uh, you can't smoke here? Sorry. They've tried it before. What? They they tried to say like, oh, because people are saying it from the audience like, oh, you can't smoke here. It was like, you can't smoke in here. Right. I'm Dave Chappelle. Dang. <laughs> And sometimes they'll open the back door and you'll hear some type of fan cut on, but yeah, yeah man. He's Dave it. Chappelle, bro. Like it's 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 crazy that his stardom, his fame, and his celebrity have afforded him certain privileges that are not accessible to the regular human being. Yep. But at the same time, this motherfucker does not have to promote a show. If it's on his website and the word gets out, the shit is sold out within hours. Yeah. Damn. Without one post from him. Mm-hmm. You, you, I mean, as a venue, what more do you fucking want? Right. It's priceless. <laughs> he's, he's not worried That's about crazy. getting paid. Right. He may do an hour. So Does he have hmm. a set or does he just go up there and talk now? Lately, re- I, I, one comic to, to another, I think he's just really going through the motions. He's venting. He's talking about he, um, he satisfied his Netflix contract. You know, just talking mm-hmm. about different things. I couldn't really hear him last night, but he's really just kind of getting some stuff off his chest. Mm-hmm. And, man, it was it was dope just to be in the room. And I love the fact that he just pull up like he's not Dave Chappelle. Did yeah. y'all ever do that? Just go up there and be like, I'm not going to do my set today. I'm just going to talk. I well, Maybe I get to a certain level. You know, I, I wouldn't do that while I'm still in the proving myself, so to speak, uh, stage and not proving myself to me or my peers is mainly to like Hollywood because mm-hmm. Hollywood and, and and an audience like the audience some of the audience may know me but and I, I feel like until 80 90 percent know me you don't have that luxury of doing it right that's one of the luxuries that's afforded to him that's not afforded to regular <laughs> people mm-hmm. yeah. so you you I don't have enough stuff under my belt where I should even be thinking about doing some shit like that okay because I, I, I I've always wondered this about famous 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 comedians. Do you think there like reaches a point where people are such fans of you that you kind of just get easier laughs? Because I yeah. feel like there's people like Dave Chappelle. He could probably say something normal yeah. that would make me die laughing. Yeah, because I'm such a fan of him. I think that's why. Not I think that's why, but I mean like that's. I think it's dope that he does his longer form comedy. Because if he did like shorter like set up punchline set up punchline, it's easier to just fall into mm. your celebrity is bigger than your talent, uh-huh. right? But if you do long form stories where people have to stay with you and then they you have to wait and actually work for that payoff, then you get to tell is it is the writing still there or is it the celebrity? Mm-hmm. So that long form forces uh-huh. people to wait and stay attentive and listen, and then when he drops it on them, he can gauge if that's a real laugh or not. It's not rapid fire, so you have mm-hmm. to be attentive. You have to go on the trip with him. So right, because even even his specials where I find myself not dying laughing, the writing is crazy. Mm-hmm. Which in is my dope. opinion, and I don't know who might feel the type of way about this, Dave Chappelle is the king of. That's a great point. Comedy. Yep. Mm-hmm. It's not. It's not the funniest thigh slapping, right. gut busting mm-hmm. ass specials you're gonna find. Mm-hmm. But it's like, oh shit, I never thought of it like that. That's a great point. Yeah. And I feel like that's a this is a genre of comedy the same way hip hop has splintered off into multiple genres as well. Mm-hmm. He makes amazing. He's the best of that's a great point comedy. Yeah. I and agree. a lot of times it comes from a story and you have to understand the story for you to understand his stance on it for you to understand that's a great point. And you you walk away with great takeaways. Mm-hmm. Like, what's your takeaway? What did you really get from that? Not just, oh, he was just funny, but wow, like he said, I never really thought about it that way. Mm-hmm. I think that's important to, to have that voice and to be able to use it in that way. It's ridiculous. Now, when I'm on the road and I got to do an hour, mm-hmm. yeah, I'll talk a little shit. You know, I'll talk about the town the first 10 minutes. You know, if I'm filling in time, I'll, I'll riff about something random, but... You know, when when you're doing comedy, it's just what you do. You might say something that might not have the, a funny intention. Mm. Yeah. yeah. That'll come off funny because you're in the mode. Once you get the crowd and they're rolling with you, then you, you can get away with a lot of shit. Hell yeah, man. Who's your favorite comic? Um, if I had to pick one dude. Or just a group, a couple of them. That's hard, man. Um, 
This guy from Chicago named <laughs> Wildcat. <laughs> um, if I... <laughs> Yeah, the I gotta, draw out. I gotta you gotta, plug me. I gotta absolutely, it out. you got to be your your biggest supporter, your biggest but, fan. But if I had to pick one, I would have to pick Richard, simply because. No, no, no. The grace are not accessible. And I, you can't go Bill. You can't go Richard. You can't go Eddie. You can't go George Carlin. Easy. You can't go Nipsey. You can't go any of them. Nipsey. Nipsey Hustle. Yeah, it's old school. Yeah. Yeah. Nipsey Hustle. Nipsey, not, not Nipsey not, Russell. R Nipsey Russell. <laughs> Nipsey Russell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I missed that part of his yeah. whole career. <laughs> Nipsey Russell, Flip Wilson, all of them. You no, can't, I can't name them. No, 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 no. Okay, you can start. You can start post Eddie. Mm. That's that's a good timeline. Man, if I really had to pick one comic. As my favorite, I don't think I could do this one, but it, I mean, it's hard. It's hard, like, dude. Like three, not even in order. Like, there's a guy from Chicago, Damon Williams. <laughs> oh my God, that is beast. is a beast, beast. And, and I've been watching him. He's the first dude to put me on stage. Damon Williams. Mm -hmm. You got JB Smooth that mm -hmm. a lot of people don't really know about. I saw his. I just recently saw one of his older sets from um, Def Comedy Jam. Mm -hmm. I had yeah. never He's seen him before. His, his old sets are it's popping. It's a guy up. from Chicago named Comedian Muhammad. I don't know. Him. People Nothing don't know. Him. I'm talking about slap the table funny. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of underground comics, man, mm -hmm. that, that just, especially from Chicago, not simply Tony Baker is one of my there. favorite. And yeah. he's from Chicago. Tony Baker is, mm -hmm. he's in my Mount Rushmore uh, today comedian. Same. Mm -hmm. He is just, he, the way he thinks is unparalleled to anyone else. It is the way he can have, he has the ability to say something average and just say it in a tone that's just funny. Yeah. And it's not like his celebrity that's making it funny. It's just like, right. why, why y'all be all up on me? Uh -huh. And it's like, why yeah. he say it like that? His cadence, his timing, his, yeah. his voice. I saw him yeah, do 10 definitely. minutes about guacamole. This shit was hilarious. And I was yeah. like, yeah. he was just talking about guacamole the whole time. He did an eight minute <laughs> bit on why dog, uh, cats are better than dogs. And it was hilarious. It's just like I've never seen somebody take that that stance on cats. First of all, cats are typically not looked at as a masculine pet. They're pet. also not better than dogs. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but yeah. but his yeah. stance on That's it was so great. Part. And then he went from there to talking about um the difference between bees, wasps, hornets, and I think like yellow jackets. And oh. just that whole breakdown of it. Like like a bee. Is a kamikaze pilot like he's gonna dive to sting you? Like once you once he stings you, his whole yes. inside. Like, <laughs> but that's like, that's what comedy is about. What are you bringing to the table? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's nothing that really hasn't been talked about until you hear somebody break down bees and insects. Right. Yeah. I love that part of the game, man. I'm I'm yeah. such a student of the arts, man. I love it. Yeah, I love it too. Y'all, uh, the comedy world, forgive Louis C.K. yet? I mean, man, he just said what all the other white comics were thinking. You know, <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, come on, man. Here's my thing, man. Prize Picks is the largest daily fantasy sports <laughs> platform in North America, okay? And it's the easy and most exciting way to play DFS. So if you are uh, wanting to jump in and wanted to give it a try when it comes to that, this is I, something I would suggest to draw because you're you're just betting against the numbers. It's not uh, you're just playing against the numbers. It's not like some of the other websites and some of the other platforms where you got people who've been doing this for 30, 40 years and they've been following players since college and high school and all of that. That 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 is that's a lot. That, that strikes my anxiety up. I don't want to deal with that. I just want to bet against the numbers, against the stats. They're going to make this much more than or less than. And that's where Prospect comes in because they make it easier. You pick more than or less than on two to six players, stat projections, and watch the winnings come in. That's something I can do. I I ain't been watching sports like that my whole life. I I I know who I like now, and I know what their typical numbers are, and that's something I feel comfortable doing. That's something I feel confident doing. All right, with quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and enormous selection of players uh, and stat types. 
Uh, Prize Picks is the number one daily fantasy sports app. All right, Prize Picks is really simple to play. I can make my picks and submit my entry in less than sixty seconds. That's another thing. I ain't trying to put a whole lot of time in this because I ain't trying to put a whole lot of money into this. So if I could get in, get out, make my little picks, and get up out of there and then see me win something, that's 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 what I'll do. Because once I start winning, I'm going to invest a little bit more time. But initially, I ain't trying to learn something for 10 hours and then get out there and lose the first bet. No, no, I'm not doing that. All right. Prospect now offers Apple Pay for quick and easy deposits into your account this football season, which is another win, okay? I can access that from my phone, which I always have on me at time. I can definitely I can uh, make my withdrawals there. That's, that's perfect. Listen, um, if you're thinking about anything, you want to get into it, this is what I would suggest you do, okay? Go ahead. Give Prize Pick a pl- uh, try. Go to prizepicks.com slash DIYS and use the code DIYS for your first deposit match up to $100. So whatever you put in there, up to $100, they are going to match it, all right? This is a great way for you to try it out, a great way for you to potentially double your money and your winnings, all right? And you know, I told you, you're only betting more than or less than against the stats of two to six players. Super easy, super simple. Try it today, all right? Go to prizepicks.com slash DIYS and use the code DIYS for your first deposit match up to $100. It is highly encouraged uh, that you guys try this out. You know, use that code and pick more, pick less. It's that easy. That's prize picks, baby. Man, hey, hey. you are killing these commercials. <laughs> <laughs> Man. You can man. talk about uh, toenail clippers. And I'm like, I'm going to buy a toenail clipper. Hey, now. man, that's what it's about, baby. That's what it's about. A lot of times, y- y- people don't know unless somebody tells people. So, you know, you got to sound, you got to sound it and sell it in a way that you you would want to try. Man. You want to try it. Mm-hmm. So we only got a couple more minutes anyway. We might have time for one story before we get up out of here. One story. What we got? Yeah. All right. Let's go with... I'll, I'll let you pick. Which, which, which one sounds more fun? You want to do horrible Christmas bonus, uh, attack of robots, or violent pastor? Shit. Oh. <laughs> crazy. Like, I, I kind of want to. We actually don't got no more guests, so like, we kind of can just kind of breeze through all three if we want to. Low key, because I was. <laughs> All that shit sound good. It, it was hard to pick one. Yeah, yeah. Um, Which one is, I like the, I like start the violent pass. Ah, yeah, Come let's on, get into it. I think violent, I know this we all, one. We all like a, yeah. a, a good backsliding Beating pastor. Beat the fuck out of you, amen. <laughs> yes. Amen. So this was uh, it's a little crazy. Um, this is the headline. A pastor attempts to stick wife's co-worker's head into a McDonald's deep, deep fryer. fryer. Yep. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I heard about this one. He's trying to mm-hmm. send them to hell the hard way. This was mm-hmm. in North Carolina, a place called High Point. Uh, his name was Dwayne Waden. This was a pastor. He was arrested last week for allegedly assaulting and attempting to push his wife's co-worker's head into a McDonald's deep fryer. And the incident occurred when his wife, who was training to be a manager, uh, called her husband for help after facing disrespect from her employees. Upon Dwayne Waden's arrival, witnesses says he walked behind the counter, placed his hands around the victim's neck, pushed their head towards a deep fryer, and reportedly punched the victim multiple times in the face, continuing until other employees managed to intervene. Uh, intervene. The victim suffered a large contusion to the forehead and right eye, along with scratches on the neck as a result to the assault. So Ooh. how are y'all pulling up if... The wife is getting disrespected at work. I mean, I didn't know a satanic baptismal <laughs> was on the menu. But, uh, it's a satanic <laughs> baptismal. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, uh, not like that. I mean, because. What was the disrespect? Yeah, I, I need to know that. I definitely need to know what the disrespect mm-hmm. was. Also, I was like, I, I don't know. I'm just thinking about, like, if I do it on the premises, then my wife could get fired too. Right. If I follow you home and beat your ass, then it might just look like a random beating. Mm-hmm. Right? But the whole pulling up, he on camera. You got caught on CCTV and 4K. Because you know somebody's phone was out. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just like you let the your grease, emotions get the best of them. The grease part was a little OD. <laughs> that was specific. That was wild. Yeah. Like, I, I'm sure, like, while he was, like, like 
like, while it was happening, he was like, "Is he's really trying to burn my face off? He's trying like, to burn crazy. my whole face off. I just called her a up. bitch. I just called her a mm. mick bitch. <laughs> 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 you old corny titty ass hoe. <laughs> wow. That's that's crazy. I feel like do you do you think if you were a pastor, you would be way less likely to go off the handle like that? Because I mean, like, yeah, you gotta protect your wife and and stick up for her, but like. That's a bad look if you got a church. Bro, I feel like that that lets you know that he was he's just he's a pastor just for the tax break and the money. Mm-hmm. Cause like is this what you teaching your flock? How you flying off the handle that fast? Yeah. Like yeah. even off the disrespect, like it just don't seem like you are you are you new? Are you a new pastor? Is this <laughs> right. an online church? You just yeah. graduate. Yeah. Oh, like that? That's crazy. Mm, that man. is crazy. Yeah. I think that um there's a lot. That's why I don't really go to church like that, because they are just run by humans. And you see, you hear it all the time. The cheating scandals, niggas getting beat up. Like, the pastors just be regular niggas sometimes. They just mm. a vessel. <laughs> they yeah. just a vessel like the rest of them. But they are human. They, everybody can, mm. you know. I, I, just, I think that was extreme. Extreme as hell. I don't know how I'm pulling them necessarily, but it ain't like that. No, man. Obviously, mm. if, if we're in a position where we need money, if my wife had McDonald's, right? So now me getting locked up, not bringing for in the church though. income mm-hmm. is going to put her in a, bad, a worse situation than we were in before. So I'm not going to do nothing that's going to fuck up the, the, the yeah, church. He might have lost, he lost his own job. <laughs> you, does it, can the church fire you for that? Well, they can uh, ask you to step down as a pastor. Oh, so he and got lot, the whole family un- unemployed. And a lot of those pastors are hired in. Mm. What you mean? Like the board will hire a pastor instead uh, of the pastors. This is my yeah. my daddy built this church. No, a lot of them are employed they seek you out, by yeah. the church. That's crazy. Woo! Yikes. Yeah, that's rough. Yikes. Do pastors get a paycheck or do they just have to get tithes? Man, I don't know. I know they. Get, I know tithes rich. pays. Pastors do get paid. Typically. They do. Yeah. By the church or? Yeah, usually there's like an amount that they get, and then they're from the tithes and the offering. Yeah. And so, like, some of it goes toward the. Uh, the 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 fees of the church, like paying some of the workers, mm-hmm. uh, the light bills, all that type of stuff, and then some of it goes toward the pastor. Um, the offering, I think, is that's what's split up into like. Well, I don't know. I don't know if it comes from the offering or the tithes, but like he getting paid from from something. But that's, yeah, and it's a non for profit, so any non for profit, you're allowed to keep thirty, forty percent of whatever donations come in, and. Do what you want to do with it. Forty percent, and you can still call it nonprofit. Thirty to forty percent. Yep. Damn, I never got like rich pastors that be like have chains and like private jets. Like the Catholic Church is very wealthy. Oh, they yeah, it's yeah. crazy. Like why 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 government. keep why do you keep giving why do people keep giving offerings if the church ain't getting fixed up but the dude has a new chain every every week? Like how does that the devote followers I mean, man the Bible. Was, the, yeah. Preachers can manipulate the Bible to mm-hmm. support anything they want. You're not supposed yep. to question God. I'm mm-hmm. a vessel of God. Mm-hmm. Don't question why I got this chain. Don't question why I need this watch. I'm mm-hmm. doing the Lord's will. This is what I need to get through these rooms and look like I played a part or I look up to part to get in these rooms with these multi-million dollar passes. I walk in there looking like any old Joe off the street. They not going to listen to me. Huh? Mm-hmm. But I gotta get in there, and I gotta, I gotta get them to let their guard down, so I can really teach them the word of the Lord. Sometimes mm. you have to look like the enemy to get in with the enemy to turn him uh, into your friend, to well, turn him into your brother. Wild flip. Well, <laughs> let him use you. So that it, easy. Damn. So was Jesus mm-hmm. getting money? <laughs> Jesus, was, Jesus was in the trap. I feel like Jesus was getting money then. He was a carpenter, so he was probably he was selling desks and. and Huh. And who's doing miracles? Let me make you a pew. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if he was getting donations. He was doing full miracles. Full miracles. They was cooking for him. Mm. He had a couple really? of, he had, yeah, they was cooking for Jesus. They, he had a couple of chicks washing this washing his feet with their hair. I want, I, want, I want that chapter. That was baller shit. I want Jesus' baller chapter he to be dropped. <laughs> the, I mean, the, the, the part, disciples were like, hey, yo, these bitches are here watching. <laughs> right. They're here watching Jesus have what they see. <laughs> 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 Damn. They probably didn't have any uh, <laughs> hand towels around <laughs> back in that day, you know? You either use your hair or potato sack that you were wearing. Uh, oh, <laughs> sack, imagine sack she's being dressed up when they heard Jesus was coming to their time. You know what I heard? Mm-hmm. I heard Damn. Jesus was coming to their time. You know he did. If Martin Luther King had hoes. <laughs> 
You know that they were doing their hair for Jesus. Uh, she just <laughs> like hands off. He like, hey, come on now, sister. You know I can't, can't yeah, be touching all of your titties like that, man. <laughs> I don't know if I should be doing this. Uh, but we walk by faith <laughs> and not by sight. <laughs> you know who my daddy is, right? Come on now. You know who yeah, my daddy is. You know who my daddy is, right? Your people are already praying to him. I'm just saying, you know who my daddy is, my boy. You, 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 bust, my you can either bust down or go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm questioning the Lord, baby girl. Hey. <laughs> That's a whole different type. Of thing. <laughs> it's like, oh, you want to get into heaven, right? Oh, <laughs> that's the originator of the gatekeepers. That's why. Look at Cal. Keep it, Cal. Yeah. Keep it, Cal. Yeah. Yeah. The thing you is, part of that's heaven, true. Right? Yeah. What do you yeah. mean? Well, because like during the, the the whole giving tithes was, if you get the more money you give, the more likely you'll get into heaven. And pastors are for sure doing that with women nowadays. But the original tithes was more like alms. It was like food. It was mm. like it's what know. you had. It was ten percent yeah, of what they, you had. Yeah, like they had you know dollar bills back mm -hmm. in the time. So you know, you'd give them a little fruit. You know, a little, little some berries. You like know? Uh, like offerings yeah. to a shrine. Yeah. Damn, I always thought it was tithes. I didn't know it was tithes until like five years ago. Yeah. Mm. Thought you were we don't really tithe. see it that much. I've never you just heard first it. time I saw yeah. it written, I was like, tenths? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What is a tenth? <laughs> <laughs> tenth. <laughs> All right, we got time for one more. What else we got, man? You want to go with the uh, what, what was the say? second one you liked? What was the first the first of the other two there? Robot attack, uh horrible Christmas bonus. Horrible Christmas bonus. All right. So um it says a woman has taken to social media to share her disbelief after receiving a baked potato as a Christmas oh, bonus from her oh. employer. Yeah. She's an employee at a hospital, yep. and she revealed that the potato came with an unexpected twist. Oh. She would have to pay for it. So it says the incident garnered a bunch of attention online, uh, expressing astonishment. She said she wrote on uh, Twitter... Uh, my work is doing a potato bar as our Christmas bonus. I'm literally getting a hospital potato as a bonus. They also said it has a $15 value, so it will be taxed on our next check. Does oh. anyone need an assistant so I can just quit right now? Oh. So, oh. first of all, the audacity came in like, oh, we don't have enough money for the bonus. Let's just give her the potato. Mm -hmm. Then they made her pay for it. Then they made her pay $15 for it. Well, they didn't make her pay $15 on it's it. She's going to be on taxed that. on the $15. So she, she, she'll she be taxed whatever $15 and change she would be. She has to be. claim that on her income tax. Yeah. So here's the uh, thing. So Wow. Let me, tell you what, let me tell you. I would have... My, my potato would have so many toppings, they would have had to go back to the store for the person after me. Because uh -huh. if you're going to tax me on this and this is going to be my bonus, bitch, I'm going to put... I'm going to put a tray worth the toppings uh -huh. on this potato. The thing I, is, I it was agree. a hospital potato, so they didn't even pay for it. They took it from the cafeteria, so yeah. it was already uh -huh. paid for. What idea? I would rather just get nothing. The crazy... The, 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 the fact that they were just like, damn, we don't got a bonus. Fuck it. What, 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 what we got on... What's today's special? Give her a potato. That's insane. Mm -hmm. What hospital yeah. was this? Like, how can we get her to quit? <laughs> it wasn't just her though. It was. It was. It was probably all the people in the hospital. Everybody got that potatoes. Was the, that was the bonus. Yeah, mm. absolutely. That's this in Idaho. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We're giving you what we got, man. Get Come on. <laughs> that it is... says, and he, here's the other thing. She said that the the potato was a step up from the WebEx leadership webinar she received last year. Uh, she got a 30-minute WebEx with leadership as, uh, as our gift last year. It was, because, it was a WebEx because the year before, they had to be in the same room with us, and they're too good. What is she saying? They had to be in the same room with us, and they're too good and not doing that again. So basically, it was probably like a meeting. You can meet with the leaders of the hospital and have like a one-on-one -on -one session with them, but now they're doing it remotely. Oh, and that was the bonus? Was the it meeting? Was the yeah. Wow. Yeah, this place this really sucks. crazy. Yeah. She said she needed the job and wouldn't je jeopardize her employment, but I, don't, I mean... I'm so checked out mentally after that. If, oh, if I know man. my employers, oh. like that's what they what they would think. And I wonder if she got it like just like at work, wrapped in a napkin, or was it mailed to her? Like, oh no, you you go down and say, hey, you, did you go downstairs to get your Christmas bonus? <sighs> bonus? Go down there, they got that that aluminum foil wrapped ass potato. You 
crack it open, you throw some butter in that, and then you they go, you make it down. and some seasoning. It wasn't yeah. just a potato. Yeah. It's At least like, they doctored it up. That's yeah. what I'm like, saying. Come on. <laughs> what, uh, what, what, what are they doing? Uh, blood transfusions <laughs> with Kool-Aid? Like, I, what, what other budget cuts? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> they're dealing with. <laughs> right, I wouldn't want to even be treated at this hospital. That's trifling. It said one time the hospital I worked at gave out cheap plastic license plate frames. Oh, yeah, I read that one. With the hospital oh. name on it. They really thought we would all give them free advertising, and they tried to force us to take one. Which is crazy. I'll, for, I'll take it and throw that shit right in the trash can when I bust this right out this room. Mm. And some people were saying, compared to my, the company I work for, I'd kill for a loaded baked potato, which might be the saddest thing I've ever typed. <laughs> well, they, they probably work for in and out so... <laughs> I just, just now nah, in and out. I feel like they treat their employees they good. They probably get a nice bonus. They probably get nice little gift mm. gift cards or something like that. Little hat, <laughs> <laughs> little bonus hat. Jesus, that shit was trash. That's yeah. insane. Have y'all ever had to deal with Christmas bonuses? Or yeah, I don't. I haven't had many jobs. So <laughs> okay. as a comedian, you know, Christmas you bonus know. is a, a set on Christmas. <laughs> mm, I get a microphone cover. Or something, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, I can't think of any. I don't think I've had any. I mean, I work at White Castles. We didn't get anything. You might have got a, like a coffee cup or some shit like that. Damn, just the cup, not even What's coffee. What's interesting is the best bonuses I've gotten have been from the small businesses I've worked for. Same. Like the ones who probably mm. shouldn't be spending the money on something uh-huh. like that, but do it. And they were all they, money? Uh, not new, uh, Sometimes they were things that were like, okay, this probably costs like two, three hundred dollars $300, something like that. Mm. So like, yeah. So the bigger of company you get, the more disrespectful of a bonus. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like the a more potato. people they have to take care of, too, with the bonus. So it's like, man, fuck this. Like, give shit, these. give them give a them potato. potatoes. Give them niggas mm. a potato <laughs> on the 25th. Wow. Wrap it. So you it's like working for a prostitute and getting a hand job <laughs> for a bonus. It's the best you got. As a manager, like, <laughs> <"Come on." laughs> if you the pimp, you tell all the hoes, like, I'm going to let all you guys. Give me here. You're welcome. <laughs> <All right. laughs> I'm using shea butter. Yeah. I'm going to pay you for it, and I'm going to actually let you keep I'm all the money. I'm using expensive shea butter. Yeah. This, this is, is coconut good, oil. This is the right good coconut oil. This ain't regular lotion. <laughs> well, it's about that time for us to get up out of here. Uh, Wildcat, you want to let the people know where they can find you at, brother? And if you got anything coming up, you're going to drop some dates on it or anything, this is the perfect time to do that. Yes, I will be selling black soap and shea butter on the corner of Crenshaw and Slauson every Friday night until the police <laughs> come. <laughs> no, um, February 29th, I am at the Comedy Store, Crack 'em Up Thursdays. Um, I'm going back to Chicago to a movie premiere February 8th uh, for a movie I did called, um, Damn. Um, Damn, good, what's the name of that sounds movie? Sounds a good one. Yeah. Um, um, <laughs> oh, love something. Um, like Lovecraft Country or something? Till, till Death Do Us Part 2. That's dope. Uh, okay. Oh, also, shit. Till Death Do Us Part 2? Part, part 2, two. yes. Was uh, there and, a w- first one? Yeah, yes. you don't remember the Dub Dose part? Wasn't that with uh, Vivica or Gabriel? Oh, no, person? this is some 2B shit. Okay, okay. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm also writing a movie called 2B or Not 2B. <laughs> <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> they got to buy that. <laughs> and what's uh, your social media handle? Social media, D-A Wildcat. Uh, it may come up as Barnabas Israel, but it's D-A Wildcat <laughs> all across the board. Brian the Wildcat Smith. There it is. Wildcat. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, thank y'all so much for watching. As always, I'm to hear more. I'm Patrick Cloud. And we'll see you next time on another episode of Damn Internet. You scary. Baby. Peace, guys. Bow, 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 bow.